Hello, and welcome to Denton Tales. Now, you may be wondering why I am wearing a green hat. Well, you see, this is a very Irish video. You couldn't really get any more Irish if it tried, so I thought a, a green hat was very appropriate. Now, this, this particular hat, while being a lovely shade of green, a very Irish green, isn't actually Irish. In fact, it's German, but it is green, and thus will serve for the purpose of this video. Now, I was sitting here, keeping a chair warm, as I did for many years in the security business. Oh, yes, I, I kept those chairs so professionally warm. I was an expert at sitting around doing absolutely nothing, but... While sitting here recently, a thought struck me. No, it didn't hurt very much. And that thought was about language, and language in Ireland in particular. You see, when one is in Ireland, as I am obviously, it is assumed that one possesses that uniquely Irish ability known as the gift of the gap. Ah, oh, yes, the gift of the gap. Other people think, you see, that the Irish can talk and talk and talk and talk, chatting away ad infinitum, talking non-stop for hours without using the same word twice. <laughs> well, no, that is a bit of an exaggeration, to be sure. A stereotype, if you like. I have known denizens of the fabled Emerald Isle whose conversational ability consisted of yes and no and mm, while I have known people from other lands who never shut up other than to take a breath. But... But if you do not possess the gift of the gab, if you are desirous of doing so, wishing to bring a sparkle to the most uninteresting conversation, add witty quips worthy of Oscar Wilde to even a conversation in a pub, give people the impression that you must have a university degree in linguistics, you can acquire the gift of the gab. Oh yes, the eloquence of the Irish is there for the taking, assuming you are reasonably fit and not suffering from vertigo. All you have to do, you see, to get that wonderful Irishness in your vocabulary is to go down to the county Cork, go some four miles outside of Cork City, to Blarney Castle. Now, the term Blarney is often used to describe eloquence of speech or just the inability to actually shut up. And for good reason, for Blarney Castle. Blarney Castle is the repository of the gift of the gab. Oh, yes, it resides there, waiting to bestow itself upon those who come seeking it. All you have to do, all you have to do is to kiss the Blarney Stone. Do that, and you will talk with scintillating brilliance. You'll yap away for hours, so you will. Oh, you won't know when to stop talking. And all on Sunday will admire your eloquence, hanging on every word that comes from your mouth. Or, of course, they may just say, well, you have a shut up, you'd give a paracetamol tablet a headache. But either way, either way you will stand out, for now you will have the Irish gift of the gap. I tried kissing the Blarney Stone myself, oh yes, but the only thing the legendary stone gave me was an extreme case of vertigo, and I never even got close enough to the damn thing to kiss it, which, given the blackened and rather disgusting look of it from being kissed many thousands and thousands of times by visitors from all over the world, was not really something I particularly regretted. But I shall come to that presently. Now, the story of this wondrous stone goes back to 1603, when, we are told, in one version of the tale, there are others, Cormac McCarthy, the Lord of Blarney, was about to have his lands taken from him by order of Queen Elizabeth I. Now, that would leave him homeless and totally broke, and he was, understandably, rather unhappy about that. And he decided, he decided that he would see the Queen personally, appeal to her to try to save his lands. But he wasn't very really hopeful of the outcomes. See, Elizabeth was a very formidable woman, and any attempt to sweet-talk her, kiss her ass, so to speak, would probably do little more than annoy her, and an annoyed Queen Elizabeth was probably a very good way to find lodgings in the Tower of London and a subsequent appointment with the headsman. But he decided to try his luck anyway. Then, then he met an old woman. Ah, oh, yes, there's always an old woman of some kind in these bygone tales. You know, there must have been old hags all over the place back then. And she says to him, Have no fear, my lord, for isn't there a stone? Yes, a stone. And it does be away up, up there on the battlements of your own castle. 
and you go up there and you kiss that stone and it will give you the magic gift of speech. You'll know words you never knew before. and sure that'll melt the heart of the queen, so it will. <laughs> now, instead of saying, go away out of that, you dotty old hag, Cormac decided to actually go up and kiss the stone. Well, he found the stone. It's a, a big slab of carboniferous limestone built into the battlements around 1446 when the castle had been built. And the gullible Cormac got down and he kissed the thing. Oh, suddenly he found himself gifted with eloquence. He was an instant poet. Golden words flooded from his mouth and he got himself off post-haste to see the Queen. Well, now wasn't she captivated? Captivated, so she was, by his magnificent turn of phrase, his beautiful use of words, and she granted him his lands. All thanks to that wondrous stone set high in the battlement of Blarney Castle. What a romantic story. Total rubbish, of course, but that's the legend. There are, there are others, as I said, but that one will do. Now, exactly how a big lump of limestone could give the gift of speech, I really don't know, but for the sake of the legend, it did. After all, who am I to question the wisdom of those long gone to their graves? As to its origin, well, now, one version has it as Jacob's pillow from the story in Genesis, and that it was brought to Ireland by the prophet Jeremiah, though the image of a Hebrew prophet lugging a great big block of limestone all the way from Palestine to County Cork is just a tad hard to believe, and that centuries later it just happens to find its way up onto the battlements of Blarney Castle. Another version has Lord McCarthy involved in a lawsuit in the 15th century, and he asks the goddess Kleena for assistance, a goddess queen of the Tuatha Dé Danann, who ruled over the fairy women of the hills of South Munster, or Desmond, and the patron goddess of Munster, possessing three brightly coloured birds who eat apples from an otherworldly tree, their sweet haunting song healing the sick. Yes, very, very likely indeed. But think about that. It's the 15th century. Ireland is staunchly Christian. She is an ancient pagan goddess, and he asks her for help. Oh, yes, he asks her, not the Virgin Mary or any of the plethora of saints that abound in Ireland, not the, the patron saints of Ireland, St. Patrick, St. Bridget, and St. Columba. No, he goes to a pagan goddess, which would have had him burned at the stake had the church got wind of it. Well, they didn't, obviously. And it worked, apparently because she told him. She told him to kiss the very first stone he came across in the morning on his way to court, and he did exactly that. He saw a stone, a great big block of limestone, just sitting there waiting to be kissed. And that's what he did. He kissed it, much, I'm sure, to the surprise of anybody who happened to be passing at the time. And then he was able to plead his case with such amazing eloquence that his victory was assured. And later, he incorporated the stone into the battlements of the castle. Yes, of course he did. And then there's the version that has been uh, given of the Lord of Blarney in 1314 uh, receiving the stone as a gift from Robert the Bruce as a reward for support in the Battle of Bannockburn, the stone being actually a piece of the Stone of Scone on which Scottish kings were crowned. Uh, thanks for all your help, Lord McCarthy, and here's a wee bit old stone for you as a reward. Oh, thank you ever so much. Just what I always wanted, a big lump of stone. <laughs> Yes, yes, well, now the story does seem to lose any credibility that it might have had, which was pretty little to begin with, in view of the fact that the stone was removed by the English in 1296, 18 years before the Battle of Bannockburn, and taken to London, where it was placed beneath the coronation chair in Westminster Abbey. To add to that rather inconvenient historical fact, geologists from the University of Glasgow examined the stone in 2014 and found it matches the local limestone. I'm sorry about that. The Irish humorist and journalist Francis Sylvester Machady, uh, 1804 to 1866, known by the pen name of Father Prout, wrote a poem about the stone, which goes like this. Tis there's the stone that whoever kisses he never misses to grow eloquent. Tis he may clamber to a lady's chamber or become a member of parliament. A noble spouter he'll sure turn out, or an out and out other to be let alone. Don't try to hinder him or to bewilder him, for he is a pilgrim from the Blarney Stone. Now there's an epic poem for you. 
You, you should uh, possibly desire to try for the gift of the gab yourself. Yes, and why not? But with, without the assistance, of course, of ancient goddesses. And you can climb up 90 feet or so to the battlements of Blarney Castle to ski, uh, kiss the stone of eloquence, as it's also known. You will discover that the stone was placed in such a way as to make kissing it as difficult as possible. You know, you can, you can forget all about the elderly, the arthritic, or those of the fear of heights. And if you suffer from vertigo, well, don't even bother. If Lord McCarthy did in fact put it there, he made damn sure only f fearless young people with some pretensions to athletic prowess were very likely ever to get their lips on it. Now, I made an attempt to kiss it back in the 1960s, and my efforts were underwhelming in the extreme. You see, you, you have the battlements and the, the wall walk around the, around the top of the keep, but the actual battlements themselves, well, they project out from the keep. They, they leave a gap some two feet wide. Uh, these are called machicolations. I've seen them described as a balcony with holes in the floor, which, come to think of it, is very Irish. And, and defenders, you see, they could drop things through the gaps onto, onto attackers below. The, the term machicolation probably comes from the old French to crush, uh, machir, and neck, call, uh, neck crushes. How delightful a charm. But you see, that, that was part of the fun of living in the Middle Ages. You know, you could, you could shoot arrows down, chuck spears, pour molten lead or boiling oil down on those below, or drop rocks on them. You know, I mean, they, they didn't have Google or YouTube back then. You had to go to Jolly's whatever way you could. So, you know, wall walk, battlements. And the Blarney Stone is on the inside of the battlements, just a, a small gap. You say, well, what's the problem? Well, you see, there wouldn't be. There wouldn't be if the stone had been up here. On the, on the battlements. The trouble is, it's down here at the bottom, well below the level of the wall walk. You see the wall walk up here and the stone down here. So how do you kiss the damn thing? Ah, well, no. Now a very good question. <coughs> Excuse me. You lie on your back. You hold a couple of metal bars that run down each side. And then you are bent over backwards, turned upside down and sort of lowered into the gap with someone holding your feet. Now, there is a metal cage below the gap, so you won't actually splat on the stones 90 feet below if you lose your grip, or the, the person holding your feet has butterfingers, which wasn't the case many years ago. And if you glance down, you'll see the ground way below as you hang there upside down, trying to get a smacker on the stone. Not comfortable. And I was lowered over the side. Oh... As I went down there, the sight of the stone was hardly appetizing. It had been kissed by many, many thousands of people. It was discoloured, sort of black and decidedly icky-looking. Its hygienic quality was certainly in some doubt. Maybe they sprayed it with disinfectant or something from time to time. I don't know. But the look of it, combined with my aversion to high places, especially high places where I was suspended upside down by my ankles, resulted in my not kissing the stone. But... Though my lips never touched the stone, I had plenty to say. Oh, yes, words flowed from my mouth. Not that I required the eloquence of the stone to do it. Words like, help, get me the hell out of here, pull me up quick, I'm going to be sick. And similar expressions came quite naturally, extempore from my mother wit, as Shakespeare put it. And I was hauled up. My attempt to gain the gift of the gab a total failure, having lost all dignity, though fortunately not my lunch, which I came rather close to doing. Thus ends the story of the Blarney Stone, and how you may obtain its wondrous gift of Hibernian eloquence. I hope, if you decide to make your way to Blarney Castle, that you do rather better than I did, which, come to think of it, would not really be very hard. So, with that, I shall say goodbye for now. Slancho.